If a particle of mass m falls through a height h above some reference level, the work done by gravity on the particle is mgh. This is the gravitational potential energy of the particle at height h. So we have some particle of mass m at height h above some reference level. Now the reference level does not have to be sea level. It would be some convenient level that we choose for whatever type of problem we're solving. Now if the particle falls vertically down, it is very easy to get the work done on it by gravity. That's because the force of gravity will be pointing in the same direction as the motion. The force of gravity or the weight of the um, particle has magnitude mg. We saw in the video on work how to get the work done by a force, a constant force on a particle that moves along a straight line. I will write wg for the work done by gravity. What we do is we um, take the component of the force in the direction of motion. Well that's very easy here. The component of the force in the direction of motion is the force itself. It's mg. Or if you want to be really precise, um, you can write mg cos 0, where 0 is the angle between the force vector and the direction of motion. But the cos of 0 is 1, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so this is the component of the force in the direction of motion, and we multiply that component by the distance, which is h. Now, an interesting fact is that we do not have to consider this particular motion of the particle. Um, the particle could have reached the reference level in any way at all. You know, we could have taken, taken a, a direction like this. The particle could have moved that down some incline. In this case, we would have to get the component of the force in the direction of motion. So we'd have to project over here and get this component. Let's suppose that this angle in here is theta. By the way, this path is meant to be a straight line. Okay, so um, we have to multiply mg by the cos of theta to get the component in the direction of motion. What would we do then? Well, this component is constant, so we have a constant force acting on the particle as it moves along this line here. It could be rolling down this thing or whatever. So what's the distance? We need to multiply the component by the distance. Well, we have a right angle triangle here, of course. The side adjacent to theta in the big triangle is h. Uh, cos of theta is h over the over the distance here. Um, cos theta equals h over x. So x is what we're looking for. x is h divided by cos theta. We just swap x and cos theta. So we'd have to multiply the component of the force, mg cos theta, by the distance, which is h over cos theta. And notice something interesting here. Cos theta cancels out and we get mgh as before. So the work done on the particle if it moves along this path here is also mgh. What's even more interesting is that the path doesn't have to be a straight line. We could imagine the particle moving along any kind of curve. We will find that the work done by gravity on the particle as it moves along here, down to the reference level, is also given by mgh. The thing is, I can't explain how to do that here because it's beyond the course. It would involve chopping the path up into tiny little increments and getting the work done on the particle by gravity as it moves along each increment and summing all the increments. It's an integration technique that's not covered in the course. If you were to do it, you would end up getting mgh. So all we need is the vertical distance through which the particle moves. So if the vertical distance is h, the work done by gravity is mgh. Now here is an interesting result. If gravity is the only force acting on the particle, then it's obvious that gravity is the resultant force on the particle. If gravity is the resultant force on the particle, the work energy theorem applies. So that's what we saw in the previous video. We saw that the work done by the resultant force on a particle is the change in the kinetic energy of the particle. Since the resultant force 
is gravity, if gravity is the only force acting, then the work done by gravity on the particle is the change in the particle's kinetic energy. So the simplest application of the work energy theorem in this case is where the object is dropped from rest and falls vertically down to the reference level. We know that the work done by gravity, or the potential energy of the mass of the particle at this height, is mgh. The change in kinetic energy is its kinetic energy at the end of its motion minus the kinetic energy at the start of its motion. We will assume that u is zero. So it's dropped from rest. And v is going to be the speed of the particle just before it hits the ground. So now we can determine v. So we plug zero in for u. So the kinetic energy at the start is zero. Now let's find v. Well, we can see that v doesn't depend on m. m cancels out from both sides. So we get gh equals a half v squared. So v squared is 2gh, or v equals the square root of 2gh. So we got this result using energy, well, using the work energy theorem. So it's assumed here that the resultant force on the particle is gravity, its weight. That means we have no air resistance. Now, we got this result before uh, a different way. As a reminder of how we did this problem before, we saw in the section on linear motion with constant acceleration that all objects near the surface of the Earth have constant acceleration. They all fall at the same rate, provided that we have no air resistance. And uh, we learned how to solve problems like this. Um, you know, we want a formula that connects u, v, the acceleration, and the distance. So u is zero, v is what we're after. The distance we called s, distance is h here. Um, the acceleration is g. So we could take downwards direction as positive. So um, the vectors are, are, are pointing downwards. And then we use the formula v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We derived this formula for the case of linear motion with uniform or constant acceleration. Um, so we get v equals the square root of 0 squared plus 2 times the acceleration, which is g, times the distance s, which is h. So as we, as we saw there, we get root 2 gh. So in this simple case, energy is not very useful, because we could just as easily have worked it out this way here.